Hi everyone and welcome back to our little duckling tutorial. We're just going to keep going uh, on building up the colours and hopefully get him closer to being finished. So what I'm going to do and start off with is um, this part of his back. I'm actually just going to darken it up ever so slightly. So I'm using the Van Dyke Brown just to add a little bit more colour and a bit more depth into this fur. I noticed when I was looking at the image it was quite difficult to differentiate between the areas and we want it to be a little bit more obvious so to do that I'm just going to use this Van Dyke Brown nice and sharp pencil and then I'm just coming in and creating little little lines little V shapes and already you can see the difference And then I'm just going to bring it in this corner as well. Just bringing in that little bit of depth and you can just see how much it's changed. The look of our duckling. Um, and we'll bring it along this side as well. Just to make sure I've got a nice sharp edge along that beak because the beak itself is quite a sharp edge okay and then I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and dark where I want it to be oops there we go that looks a lot better now so I'm gonna take my vista and I'm just gonna come in here with the vista over this area a little bit more as well so I'm just kind of building up a little bit more colour to give that differentiation between these areas and I'm happy with this now okay right so we're going to move down to the body so I just need to shuffle the drawing upwards a little bit so we're definitely going to be working on getting the rest of our duckling's body drawn in um, this part. So I'm going to just get my putty eraser. Let me just stretch and warm it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to take away that graphite at the bottom here. I'm going to make sure I lift it all up. don't want any graphite lines. Okay, and then the ivory is a base layer. I'm just going to come up to this neck as well. Might as well get quite a bit of this base layer drawn in and then we can work on top of it. Okay, just going to remove a bit more graphite above this foot. The ivory again. This is a nice area to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with my burnt ochre very lightly. Kind of curves up here a little bit. And then I'm taking my brown ochre again very lightly, I'm not pressing hard. A 
over the top you can see just how light a pressure it is and then my cinnamon and that's just going to come in along this top edge and then I can blend all that together with the ivory it's a bit of a harder pressure now with the ivory Over the top like that. Now I've taken the green gold and it's going to start to blend downwards. You can see I'm really following the, the direction of this fluff. And I'm just going to cover all along here as well with the Back to my burnt ochre, blending over the top of that green gold edge so that we're getting a nice smooth blend. And the brown ochre. Then taking the nugget and I'm just going to start to apply this across this whole kind of chest area And the Vista, just do the same, blending into areas that you've already drawn. So we're just building up all the colours that we can see in this little duckling's chest and neck. get a lot darker in a moment. We'll start off getting darker by using the uh, burnt sienna. So with the burnt sienna I'm just going to come in and just follow the shape of the fur. Using the medium pressure now, I'm pressing a little bit harder. You see just how it's darkening up these areas nicely. And I'm going to bring this all the way down that chest
you can see as I'm adding in this burnt sienna, I'm leaving little gaps in between each line and overlapping so that we get a natural look to the fur and the colours that we've already applied to the page shine through. Okay, and then I'm going back to the green gold. Just going to apply that over the top. And then the kaput mortem. Start bringing in some detail. So I'm going to start bringing in harder pressure in those really darker areas. So the darker shadows, I'm just going to start to map them in. Down here we've got a few little clumps. It's not a lot, they're a bit fur, few and far between the further down the neck we come. But that's fine. And then I'm going to take my Vista again. Sorry if you can hear my dog is chomping on a treat. <laughs> Harder pressure this time with the booster. <laughs> and then my uh, Van Dyke Brown, just where those shadows were, I'm just going to blend over. Again, it's just adding a little bit more depth into the piece. Back to the burnt sienna. So, um, my burnt ochre, just gonna come down here now, just blend out. And then the ivory. Just to blend. Okay, so I've got my uh, putty eraser again and I'm just going to come in and lift graphite and then my ivory for a base layer and again I'm just going to lift. That's just another section that we can work on. So this is only a small piece, but we're still managing to get quite a nice little bit of detail in there. I think it's nice. Every now and then we're doing the A4 drawings. It's quite nice to come in and do in a smaller piece. Okay, that's the ivory base layer. So as we come around here, it's getting a bit darker. So I'm just going to take my brown ochre, light pressure, and 
Then that was points. And then take the cinnamon. Do a brown ochre. And then we need the green gold. And then the vista. Just going to sharpen this. Again, making sure that we're following the direction that this is going in. So you can see how it's coming round. It's creating that nice rounded look to our duckling. I'm bringing that vista all down that um, green gold. Okay, and then the nugget, so it's just how we've done it before, building up all those different shades. And you can use whatever colours you see, it doesn't have to be the ones that I'm using. Again, I'm leaving little gaps between these strokes so that the colours that we've laid down previously are showing through. And it also shows that this fur is in little clumps. Okay, and then the burnt sienna. Okay, then I'm going to take my Caput Mortem and again I'm going to use this hard pressure to build up those shadows, really creating those clumps of fur. It doesn't need to be the same as the reference photo, as long as your fur clumps are going in the right direction of, of the uh, little duckling, it's going to look realistic. And then I'm going to take my um, 
I'm going to take the green gold first, I think, over the top. And then I don't see any blend over. Create these areas nice and blended. Just gonna take my brown ochre and then the ivory over the bottom of this duckling. Okay. Oh look at him, he's got a body now. <laughs> the pretty eraser. And then ivory face here. Just making sure that I've lifted that graphite properly before I apply the ivory. Okay, I'm going to take the um, brown ochre, this area is quite light here, I'm just going to take that brown ochre across this area as well, a nice undertone, going right up to that beak, I don't want a, a white halo, right, right over that beak. And then I'm going to take my green gold, so I'm just going to do this little cornered area here first. And then the burnt sienna. Come on, and then the uh, blister. Just gonna get the ivory and just gonna go over that as well. Just to blend. Smooth it all out nicely. Okay. Then taking my burnt ochre. Okay, not pressing hard, just nice and lightly. And then the beige red. Bit of a harder pressure with the beige red just to help blend, make this area look a bit lighter. And then the burnt sienna to help blend into these areas.
Let me try it again. Okay, just going to take my Van Dyke Brown in here. Um, actually, I'm going to take the Vista. Um, and then the Van Dyke Brown. Right, we've got a little bit of fur behind this foot that he's picking up, so we're going to map that in first. I just need to sharpen my ivory. Um, I'm going to go in with your ivory base layer in this little corner. I'm going to lift this graphite, but I'm not worried if I don't lift it too much because the foot itself is dark. And we're going to have a look at doing this blurred effect as well. So I'm going to erase all that graphite that's not going to be covered by the foot. And then I'm just going to lift some of the graphite on the foot itself. Okay. And then ivory base layer. Going in first of all with my burnt ochre. Green gold. And then down here, I'm going to take the burnt sienna and I'm kind of pushing it up and under that fur on the body. I will come in with a slice tool as well, I think. I'm going to go take the Vista and then the Ivory Brown ochre. And then I'm just going to take the um, Caput Mortem, just really darken here. Maybe the burnt sienna as well. Just building up the colours so I've got that depth. Um, and my burnt ochre, just where I can see a little bit of ivory, I just want that to look a bit more orangey. Um, my vista, I'm just again, just darkening that edge. So, okay, I'm just going to take my slice tool just create some little finer details
Let's apply that on the neck. Right, so we now need to do this foot, and this foot is quite dark, so we're going pretty dark straight away, but it is blurry as well, so we're going to try and get that effect. So what I'm going to do first of all is just a little mark there. I'm going to come in with the ivory as the base layer. So first of all, I'm going to come in with the burnt umber and I'm just going to apply this almost as another base layer above the ivory. I'm just going to create that effect of that fur going over the top there. I'm using circular motions with my pencil. We're not drawing fur anymore, we're drawing a foot, so nice circular motions. And the circular motions are going to help us when it comes to uh, drawing in this blurred effect as well. Right, so I'm going to take my walnut brown now, nice and sharp. And I'm going to use harder pressure now, circular motions, and I'm just blocking in these darker shapes. See, I'm pressing nice and hard now. And the top of this foot as well. So this bit that we're doing on this foot is going to be more about just the colours rather than details. And that's going to help us get that blurred effect as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to use less pressure to come in again with the walnut brown. So I'm not pressing as hard, just to build up another layer on this foot. Okay, my burnt sienna. And you can see I'm not doing a sh sharp edge at the end. I'm letting those circular motions go over the end. It's creating that soft, fuzzy look. I'm using this burnt sienna because we've got those reddish tones. And then I'm just going to take my nugget because we've got a nice lighter colour here. So it's just about building up your tonal values. And my ivory, because we have got a little white line, so I'm just going to bring that in with the ivory. Back to the nugget. Okay, 
I'm going to take my uh, dark sepia and hard pressure now. See, it's just really building up that depth. So those darker areas and then lighter your pressure when you want to blend it outwards. Okay, back to my walnut brown. Just going to darken where I need to. And then what I'm going to do is we've got these sort of lines coming. So I'm just going to light pressure, just draw in these kind of movement lines. Not pressing hard. And then I'm going to get the ivory and just blend over the top. Circular motions. And that's just going to help give you that movement. Soft edges. There's no harsh edges, just need to soften that edge so the walnut brown. So if you've got any harsh edges, just do your circular motions. Soften those edges. And the ivory and that is just going to give you that nice blurred effect what got going on just taking my um slice tool and just creating some of that fur it's just coming over that bit of the foot as well okay that's one foot on to the next so put a eraser lift that graphite and then I'm going in again with my um, ivory for the base layer. Just for this part of the uh, foot. And then taking my cinnamon. Again, I'm just going to do circular motions, but you have got a sharp edge. This foot is in focus. So we want to keep those sharp edges. And then our burnt sienna going up and under that fluff on the um, chest so it looks like that the um, leg is behind and then nice hard pressures we bring this burnt sienna down the leg So, and then I'm taking my walnut brown and I'm just going to start to build up that dark little lines, curving them round to create that 3D effect of the leg. I'm blending that down as well. Just going to take the kaput mortem over there as well, and I dark sepia just to darken those little little details. Blending that outwards. Right, right. Let's just lift some more graphite. So I'm going to come in, oh, I've not lifted that very well, have I? <laughs> right, I'm going to come in with my warm grey one. I'm just going to do these little 
toes one by one. If you break it down into sections like this, it'll just make doing the whole foot easier. So that is the uh, one by one. I'm going to take the Caput Morton. Over the top. Make sure I've got a nice sharp edge. And then the walnut brown, this area is going to be quite dark, so we'll probably end up going in with a dark sepia, but just want to bring in this walnut brown first. And I'm pressing hard because I do, do want it to be nice and dark. Bend it upwards, so we're leaving that put mortem to show on the top of the foot. Just going to get my cinnamon just along the top edge here. Get a little bit of that pink. And then the ivory. And the tops. You see just how quick that little toe took. Right, so back to my warm grey one. We've got like this bigger toe in the middle. So this is sort of like one half of the lighter area. And then another half. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take my walnut brown and just map in That darker shape that's going on and it's coming down here as well okay so back to my one grey one just make sure I've got a nice base layer my ivory just at the top half of um, this foot right so I'm going to get my burnt sienna. We need really sharp pencils for this foot. And with the burnt sienna, coming about halfway down, small curved lines, which are going to create those nice little ridges and create the look of this 3D part of the foot. And I'm also bringing that burnt sienna in like a triangle shape here, blending that upwards. I'll take my beige red very lightly over there as well. Okay, now I want my Payne's Grey. And with a Payne's Grey, I'm just kind of going to map in around that little claw. Bring that upwards. And then I'm just going to map in those little lines again on the middle of this toe. Which kind of come down and come round that claw there. And underneath. Okay. I think I need to bring this in a little bit more here. So I'm just using the Payne's Grey. Blend that toe in a little bit more. Okay, then I'm going to take my burnt umber along here, blend that upwards, and the same along that little toe, burnt umber, and the beige red. 
trying not to focus too much on the details because we want the detail to be on the uh, duck itself rather than its toe but just adding a little bit back to the Payne's grey highlighting those little lines again and the burnt sienna so I'm not going to do too much to this toe you could go into so much more detail but I don't want to bring too much attention to the toe so the Payne's grey Okay, I'm going to take my warm grey wool. I'm just going to map in this webbed section. So that's the base layer warm grey wool. And then I'm going to come in with my nugget. And then my warm grey free over the top of all that nugget. And then I'm going to take my walnut brown, blend that down from that toe. And it's going to blend down from the shadow that we just need to add in. So I'm just going to actually come in here with the dark, with the walnut brown, straight in, hard pressure, and then I can blend that down. And then I'm going to get my Payne's grey. And along this bottom edge as well. And that upwards. And then back over with the warm grey free. That'll just help smooth and blend. It's a very smooth area, so we want to capture that. And there's the webbing. So the uh, next two, oops, so one grey one. Coming in here, I'm just going to apply the one grey one across all over here. And the ivory along the top of that toe, because it's very light. So I'm going to use the ivory there and blend that into that one grey one. Okay, so I'm going to start from the lightest end, so I'm going to get my nugget. Just going around that claw, and again, I'm not going to add too much detail, just a little, little areas, but I want the focus to be on the actual duckling rather than its feet. And then the cinnamon. And we want the burnt sienna over the top of that nugget area. So blending up the top of here. Get the beige red along the ivory section. And that'll blend into that burnt sienna nugget mixture. My uh, burnt umber. I'm going to bring that down here and blend it over again. Harder pressure. On the walnut brown. Okay, 
and I can put more of them just along here and then that cinnamon again My walnut brown just need this to blend nicely. Just taking that burnt umber along the bottom here again. The paint's grey. Right. Um I'm going to take the uh, warm grey one again the nugget And then we want our Payne's Grey, especially along this bottom edge. Okay, let me put... And it's going to come down here as well, so I'm just blending into that walnut brown because that will add depth to the shadow there. And then I can bring this downwards. And along this edge, blending it outwards. I'm going to take my uh, Vista just a little bit in here. And then going over all of that webbing with the warm grey free. Right to look nice and smooth so if you need to use circular motions to get your pencil strokes smooth uh, yeah do that and then i'm just gonna make sure i get all of this really nicely blended so i'm just coming back in with the paints gray just to blend there again Take my burnt umber, I'm just going to bring it circular motions along this toe as well, a bit more. Okay, and we have a duckling. So I've just zoomed out a bit and I can notice some areas um, as I'm looking at the drawing where I need to add a little bit more shadow just to add the depth. So I've got my burnt sienna. I'm just going to, oops. Come in here. And the nugget to just come round and blend. Burnt ochre. So you just need to look at your piece and just see if there's anything extra that your piece needs. Green gold and just make any changes or no changes if you don't think your piece needs any changes. Burnt umber. I'm just adding a little bit more shadowing into areas. And I'm just gonna get my walnut brown just underneath this beak. Build that shadow there. Um, and my, um, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take my burnt sienna, burnt sienna again, just going to And then my 
just uh, my brown ochre. And I'm just going to create some little bits of this fluff as well that's coming kind of off of the side here. I'll just go over that with my ivory. That'll just really soften those edges down. Back to my walnut brown. Just gonna and blend sienna as well. Softening edges with the ivory. And I think I'm happy with that now. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Just those little touches made all the difference. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed drawing this duckling, especially with his little blurry foot. Um, and any questions, let me know. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.